a, a minute as well, Mark, for everyone to join. I will. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Bergstrom. I am um, chair of the Ad Hoc Community Oversight Board Study Committee, and uh, I'll call this uh, public meeting to order. Uh, the committee was established in, uh, in late July through a, a resolution of Borough Council, and nine members were appointed by Borough Council. And in a minute, I'll ask each of the members to introduce themselves. As I said, I'm Mark Bergstrom. I'm, I'm chair of this committee, and I'm chair of the um, of the Police um, um, Civil Service Commission. Um, outside of that, I'm an associate teaching professor of criminology at Penn State and executive director of the Pennsylvania Commission on Sentencing. Um, the committee was established, or the, the study committee was established to provide the State College Borough Council with recommendations regarding one or more community oversight board models for consideration. And the committee has met on, on three occasions uh, to, to look at various models that might be available and, and some, some background on issues and concerns that have been raised in the state college community and, and how those might um, link to goals or roles of a community oversight board. And so this is um, our second public meeting. We had a meeting last night that was um, well received. We, I believe it went for about two hours and we had, uh, I, I think, over 80 people online, but, um, but uh, many people uh, providing comments, so very helpful comments. Uh, we also um, have received comments through chat during the, the uh, Zoom webinar or, or meeting, and uh, we've received emails as well, and you'll get details on that in, in a few minutes. Um, what we will um, be doing today is receiving more comment and, and again to help the committee think about what type of structure, what kind of role a community oversight board could play. So we are a study committee. We're just trying to come up with a structure that makes sense and, and does good, helps to advance some of the, address some of the concerns that are raised. Um, and we will be having um, more adi additional committee meetings, and then we will have at least one more public meeting to discuss um, the direction we think we're going as far as any kind of recommendations. Uh, eventually, we'll be providing recommendations to the, the Borough Council for their consideration. Uh, so with that, let me turn to um, the committee members and ask them to introduce themselves. Um, what we are, are asking is just a little bit of background, but also um, the municipality from which you, um, in, in which you live. So I, I live in State College Borough, and um, I'm going to just go in sort of uh, order of individuals on the committee and ask them to introduce themselves. So we'll start with Susan. Hi, I'm Susan Bardo. I am obviously on this committee. I also serve on the Civil Service Commission. Um, and outside of that, I'm a visiting assistant professor at Penn State Law, and I direct the Family Law Clinic there. I live in the Holmes Foster neighborhood of State College Borough. Thank you, Susan. Jason? Hi, everybody. I'm Jason Brown. Uh, you may know me from uh, the radio station I also work with. Three Dots Downtown. I've served with the Rotary Club and many worked for many other nonprofits here locally. I live downtown State College, and I'm here to help move this along so that we can make some progress in our community. And I'm happy to be part of this team and serve the needs that you're going to address. Great, thanks, Jason. Barbara. Looks like we might have lost Barbara, but. We'll uh, we'll come back in a minute. Um, Janet, 
Yeah, hi, my name is Janet Irons and I live in the borough. Um, I am recently retired professor of history from Lock Haven University. Um, I've been involved in a lot of community organizations, uh, including a lot of racial justice organizations and the prison society. Thank you. Uh, Nalini? Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Nalini Krishnanpati, and I've lived in State College for the last 33 years. I'm a resident of the Green Tree neighborhood in the borough. Um, I'm also a Penn State alum. Um, I studied chemical engineering and women's studies at Penn State. And uh, I'm active in the uh, community. I'm a board member of the Mid-State Literacy Council. I also serve on the Governor's Advisory Commission for Asian Pacific American Affairs. And um, this afternoon, I'm really thankful that you're all here and looking forward to hear your voices in this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Jim? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm James Locker. Uh, I came to State College in 1972. Actually, when I first arrived, I lived here in Bowlesburg for a short period of time. Then I moved into the borough. And then 22 years ago, I moved back here into Bowlesburg. So I'm a resident of Harris Township. I'm retired from Penn State after almost 40 years of working. My last 30 years was as the Equal Employment Opportunity Officer for Penn State Cooperative Extension and the College of Agricultural Sciences. Uh, over the years, I've been involved in a variety of boards and advisory committees in State College. Uh, one of my last ones, I uh, served as, uh, on two separate occasions as the, uh, 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 the um, chairperson of the Center County Advisory Council to the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission. And I was, I enjoyed that uh, involvement and I'm really enjoy, enjoying being a part of this body as well as my involvement with the uh, uh, State College Police Civil Service Commission for the past 35 years. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Uh, Dan? Good afternoon. My name is Dan McKenrick. I'm an attorney at Penn State Student Legal Services, where I represent uh, students' needs in criminal and civil areas. Um, I, my uh, role on the board is I'm the representative from Harris Township uh, that's on the board, um, or this committee, excuse me. Um, I'm a volunteer in other organizations as well throughout the community, like the Center Helps Board, um, and uh, just looking forward to a great discussion today, and thank you very much for attending. Thanks, Dan. Shoba? Hi, my name is Shoba Siva Prasad Wadia. I am a resident of Ferguson Township since 2008 uh, and uh, have uh, a lot of experience in the community. Mm -hmm. I run a clinic at Penn State Law called the Center for Immigrants' Rights and one uh, pillar of our work is community lawyering um, and one of our clients includes the Borough of State College. Uh, I've also been an immigration attorney for 20 years and serve as the Associate Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at the law school. Thank you, Shoba. Uh, we also have as, as a member of our, our committee, oh, there she is, um, Barbara. Uh, we're just doing brief intros. We lost you for a moment, so welcome back. You'll have to unmute and if you could provide a, a brief intro. Hello, everybody. My technology over here is just not being very kind to me this <laughs> afternoon, but my heart is in it. My name is Barbara Farmer. I'm a retired administrator from the uh, State College Area Public Schools, and I was at Penn State as a director of multicultural affairs in IST, and I live in Bozeburg. Great, thank you. So those are the nine members of, uh, of our um, ad hoc committee, our study committee. Uh, I also just want to recognize that we've been really um, supported in a, in a huge way by the borough and, and especially three individuals with the borough. Um, Tom King, who's the assistant borough manager, uh, Douglas uh, Schantz, who you're going to uh, meet soon because he'll be telling us everything about Zoom and he'll be managing our, our meeting this afternoon and Lisa Thompson, who's been uh, taking copious notes and, and preparing minutes and doing other, other uh, uh, tasks for the, uh, for the uh, study committee. So thank you to all of them. They've been great, really helpful. 
Um, I'm going to turn it over to Douglas to talk about the, the Zoom technology and also other ways that you can uh, provide comments to the committee. Douglas? Hi, my name is Douglas Shantz, and, and I want to thank everyone that's joined us and the board and this committee for the great work that they're doing. Uh, to provide an overview of how tonight will work is everyone will have four minutes to speak on the prompts that Mark will uh, announce here and uh, after I'm done. And uh, whenever to speak during the meeting, all you have to do is click the raise hand button. Uh, I do see that we have a participant on the uh, phone as well. You can raise your hand to be identified to speak uh, using star six and then star nine. Um, at that time, I will call you by your first name and let you know that you have the floor. And I will also identify whenever there's 30 seconds left in the four minute timing as well. Um, if there's any questions, please submit them via the Q&A or the chat feature. And as I stated in the chat feature, if you do not want to provide your comments via voice uh, during this meeting, you can email them to us at engage at statecollegepa.us. That's engage at statecollegepa.us. All of those messages will be provided to the committee members. And you can also submit them via the chat feature on Zoom. And uh, that'll be saved and also presented to uh, the full committee afterwards. And if you have any questions at all, or any technical issues, you can get a hold of me directly at web admin at statecollegepa.us. I'm uh, constantly checking that that email inbox and and willing to help you out however I can. And uh, thank you everyone, and and I uh, hope we have a good uh, meeting. Great, thank you, Douglas. And in a moment when we get started, uh, Douglas will uh, share some slides that will continue to rotate uh, as we as we go through the um, uh, receiving public comment. And it's just some uh, some some. Uh, questions and some other things that might help to uh, stir some some comments among the people. So uh, that will start in a few minutes. Let me just give a little bit of background um, for the committee and its work. Um, as I said, the, the purpose of the committee is to identify a model or several models for consideration by borough council for community for a community oversight board. And um, there is a national association that has done a lot of work in this area, um, Nicoli. And Nicoli has identified, um, in essence, three different approaches to oversight boards. One that, that focuses on investigations, one that focuses on reviews, and one that focuses on audits or monitoring. And, um, and those and any hybrid models, uh, any other kind of models, could be considered by the study uh, committee as we move through. But what we found in, in their research was that it's really important to know why you are, are impaneling a committee, uh, what its purpose is, what, what the goals are that they're trying to accomplish, and, and what the tools are, what's the method of, of engaging or, or providing oversight. And so um, that's why this public meeting is so important uh, we had one last night, a lot of comments received, very helpful comments, and we'll continue uh, this process today. What we ask is that anyone who would like to provide comments, um, uh, we're going to have two rounds of comments. The first round, we'd really like to focus on some of the goals that are typically identified with oversight boards. And to the degree that you feel um, that you'd like to comment or, or discuss any of those goals, um, this would be an opportunity. The high level questions we have are, you know, what should the goal of an oversight board be in state college? And what should the role of that oversight board be? And then we have a number of very um, uh, of specific goals that are often associated with these types of oversight boards. And so you'll see six of them listed and um, they include improving public trust, including transparency, ensuring fair and equitable conduct, ensuring an accessible complaint process, promoting thorough and fair investigations, and improving policy. So those are our common ones. They may apply in state college. All of them may apply, or, or none of them may apply. But we, we'd like during the first round of discussions or of comments to sort of focus on, on goals and what the goals would be. And as we get through that, that round of, of uh, comments. Then we'll move to a second round that's, that's more general comments. And at that time, I'll, I'll discuss that. If, if you'd like to talk about both goals and some general comments, um, feel free to do all that at one time during the first round. 
And uh, we'll give you a little extra time if necessary to pack all of that in. But we'd ask people to really try to limit their comments to about four minutes. And, uh, and, and we, we will be taking all of this down and uh, we will be meeting to review all of the comments we receive. Um, so, so again, if you have both general comments and specific comments to, to goals of a board, um, round one is your time and uh, package that all together if you like. We'll then have a second round that will be more general comments and, and those that, uh, that want to comment at that point, same thing will apply, four minutes, and we'll talk a little bit about that at the start. So um, with that in mind, um, when, when you are selected to unmute and to provide comments, again, uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, that would be great. If you could identify your municipality, that would be helpful. Um, but um, whatever you're comfortable with is fine with us. And, and again, if, um, if you decide you don't want to provide public comments um, through Zoom in, in this way, please feel free to uh, provide chat or an, an email comment because uh, we want as much input and information as possible as we move forward. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Douglas, who is, uh, is our manager of Zoom, and he will, uh, he will start uh, bringing people online to uh, provide comments. Thank you. Hi, hi, everyone. If you would like to be recognized to speak at the moment, please utilize the raise hand feature and I will call on you by your first name. Melanie? Hi, uh, my name is Melanie Morrison. Um, I was on the meeting last night. I wanted to be sure to be on the meeting today so that um, I can report back to the 320 Coalition as the secretary. Um, but I would like to speak to structure as it pertains directly to the goals of trust and fairness. Um, last night, the mayor made it a point to state that the implied parameters of this board, that it would serve in an advisory capacity um, to borough council only and would have no actual authority or power. However, amendments can be made to the charter, which would transform, which would transfer some of that power to the oversight board. They can also create an ordinance um, the board by way of amendment per, per um, Nicole's website can be given the power to independently investigate and impose discipline on the police force. Last night, the members of our community who spoke have overwhelmingly called for this board to be as effective as possible. This board must have teeth. The same members of the community who are calling for this board who are actively engaged in its creation and implementation have continuously pushed for the board to be a tool of transparency and accountability. And this will not be accomplished by half steps or merely creating a board to appear forthright. The borough charter has been amended in the past. The community oversight board can be written under municipal charter or ordinance. The charter is not structure that is set in stone, and we will be calling on the borough to consider taking all steps necessary to ensure that the board has the capabilities, permissions, and powers um, to conduct the duties necessary to be an effective means of transparency and accountability. All of this being said, it's also immensely important that we take special care in selecting board members, establishing term limits, and all of the operational aspects so that this board can hit the ground running, be sustainable, and best serve these members of our community who need it most. So when we're looking at whose voices to heed, it should be the members of the affected community and not those who serve to heap praise upon the police. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. I U N. I-U-N. You mean I-Y-U-N? I-Y-U-N, sorry. I couldn't, uh, I did not see the Y. I apologize. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. Yes, my name is Iyon Osagi. I want to, first of all, thank Melanie and the 320 Coalition for um, just the number of things they've laid out concerning their um, 
uh, worries as to what sort of a board we're talking about. Uh, is it a board that's empowered to actually make something happen? Or is it a board that would indeed just make the police department and the borough look good? I really want, um, I, I'm just, I just wanted to say I really support um, all of the things that Melanie just mentioned. But I also want to ask one question. Since I wasn't at the meeting yesterday, I had a different meeting. Um, I wanted to ask one question in looking at the goals, which I looked at really quickly. Um, I was wondering where in those goals do we have, um, you know, um, my question would be what role would the oversight board play in relation to legal cases brought against the police department. I wasn't quite just looking at all the itemized, um, 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 the itemized list. I really didn't really see um, where we, we or where the oversight board really comes in, in terms of actually um, really talking, articulating an intersection between um, the legal arm of things in relation to police action. Thank you. I don't know if I make sense, but I wanted to just- No, you do, and, and thank yeah. you. And, and these these meetings are intended to receive comments. Uh, we, we really, as a committee, have not made decisions on things like that, but we are, we are taking comments. And, and um, I appreciate that one of the issues is uh, the role of any kind of oversight board, and, it, and that would include, from what I take from your question, um, involvement or addressing legal concerns involving the department. Um, so we'll, we'll take that back. If you have any specific suggestions about what a board should do or what powers it should have, um, please feel free to, to let us know or to uh, email, chat, whatever. Um, the, other, the other, I guess, aspect of that um, is, is that we will be constrained by uh, what is possible now, but that does not mean that we cannot identify issues as, as were suggested for um, changes in the charter, changes in other things. I, I think that's um, a valid issue to raise, but part of the, one of the things we'll be looking at in a recommendation is what is, what is possible presently, and then uh, perhaps what would we be suggesting as, as changes. So, um, so I, I uh, hope that's helpful. Um, but we welcome any other comments you have. Uh, one per uh, one uh, note I did. Uh, this is uh, came up in the chat and in the questions and answer. We will be uh, the study committee will be uh, receiving comments after this meeting. You can submit those to the email address on the screen. Engage at statecollegepa.us. Uh, Joseph, you should be a, allowed to unmute and talk. Hi, can you uh, hear me? We can, thank you, Joseph. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Joe, Joseph. Um, I'm a resident of State College. Uh, I just moved here, so I'm not exactly sure what municipality I would say or anything like that, but yes. So um, as it relates to the goals of the Civilian Oversight Board, um, you know, I think, some, you know, the goals look good to me. I mean, right, they make sense. Uh, you know, ensuring fair and equitable conduct, thorough and fair inve investigations, things like that, improving policies. But um, something that uh, I thought would be important was that the board shouldn't just be reactive. It should be proactive in identifying areas in which the police department is you know, not doing it as good a job as it can be, um, or identifying those areas. I'm areas. muted, so you don't have to be quiet. What? Oh, sorry. Um, and so um, identifying those areas in which, um, uh, well, the, you know, the police uh, are, are not doing as good a job as they can be, or areas in which the community and the, the police, um, you know, they're, there's a particular disjuncture uh, where um, the community doesn't trust the police as much as they might. Um, in particular, I think the recent incident 
you know, the, the, the murder of Osaze Osagi was, um, you know, I think it makes me, you know, makes me at least reconsider the role like the police should play in, 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 in dealing with mental health crises. Um, you know, in, in the sense that, uh, right, the training, the expertise, the skills the police have may not make them the best actors to, to be dealing with mental health crises. They are better suited for dealing with other sorts of situations. Um, and so something I would like to see the Community Oversight Board do is investigate this more. Um, is this a pattern? Um, I'm, this is also, I was doing a little reading last night about the incident and right, all three officers had participated in this like training program for dealing um, for police response to mental health issues and it was considered the gold standard. Uh, and, and it still right, couldn't prevent the, the murder. And so, um, yeah. And so I would like to see the community oversight board look into these pro like being proactive about these things and looking at you know areas where maybe there are better actors that could better serve the role the, the police are currently filling which would make it safer for police officers it would make it safer for the community and it would allow the police to focus uh, in on things they're more suited for thank you thank you Justin. catherine Hi, can you hear me? We can. Hi, Catherine. Hi, my name is, I live in State College Borough. Thank you for having this meeting today. Um, as far as the goals, my number one goal for this committee would be the ensure fair and equitable conduct. That just seems like pretty obvious that we need to have that in our community. And if we don't have it, it's something we need to fix. And the second, most important goal that I would say is to promote thorough and fair investigations. Um, something that you didn't have on there was to make sure what happened to Asaze never happens again, never happens to anyone. So I know you probably can't write that um, as a goal. I think it's good to keep in mind that that's why this happened. That's why this group was made. Um, and in order to fulfill those goals, I would wanna see a group that has the ability to do things that, um, like Melanie says, has teeth, um, is able to take some action. A group that is made up of voices that are not currently being heard. So people that have been affected in our community. And I would say it's important that this group be not affiliated with um, the police themselves or um, the current borough council, because I think those voices are already being heard. So it would be important to me to have a selection process in which people um, that are not currently involved that, that have been affected by this. Thank you. Thank you. Maggie? Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, thank you. Okay, great. Um, thank you all for having this meeting today. Um, I, have, I wrote my comments down because I think it will be a little bit more clear. But um, again, my name is Maggie Sakura. I am a State College Borough resident. My family has lived here for close to 30 years. And so I, I wanted to thank you all for giving me this time to speak and your interest in creating this, um, or I guess, have, yeah, creating the Community Oversight Board and um, the interest in what it would look like and its goals and what its structure will be. So when I think of this board, the most important point for me is that it has enough weight to monitor, investigate, and review the police department practices, policies, and procedures to ensure officers are engaging in fair and equitable conduct, and they have the guidance and directions from senior officers to do so. This weight must also be heavy enough to, to affect policy changes within the State College Police Department 
and when working with the police union. Across the nation, COBs carry too little weight to appropriately enforce justice when it is needed. The killing of Osaze Osagi has left his family and loved ones reeling with an enormous hole in their lives. While the officers involved may carry on with life as normal because their actions on in March 2019 were in line with police policy at the time, and they nor the State College Police Department have been held accountable. And we know this because nothing has significantly changed and the public has no evidence that the events of March 2019 will not happen again. And I think most of us can agree that what happened last March was not in the least equitable or fair. So I can't speak to the mental spaces of the officers, but the fact that their professional and civic lives continue as normal tells us, the community, and the world that vulnerable people like Osazi don't matter. People with mental illness and people of color, but they do matter and he does matter so very much. So it is my hope this new board will act independently to ensure the police department engages in fair and equitable conduct which is my first goal priority. Also that it has the power to conduct fair and thorough investigations in light of an incident like lethal use of force, for instance. And this is my second goal priority. And also that the public is informed and that the COB can affect changes in police policy, which is my third priority. I understand this will be difficult and that we as a society have placed enormous burdens on our police officers and it's on all of us to create a safe and supportive community as well. I do hope with this board and future mental health task force recommendations that they, this all will lessen the call volume police need to respond to and make our goals easier to attain. Fourth, I would like that the complaint process is accessible for all and after which my goal priority for the COB is to increase transparency of their work and findings, including related, um, releasing related body cam footage and police encounter data associated with their work and their findings. And finally, my last priority would be ensuring public trust. And I put this last because I don't believe that trust can come until we address our- 30 problems. seconds. And again, I, I wanted to reiterate what um, Ayun Osazi said and Melanie that I, I want this board to have this weight and teeth um, and that it's actually can be used as a tool to improve um, policing and our relationship with the police and the community. Um, thank you all so very much. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, again, one of the questions that was submitted in the Q&A was about the deadline for comments. Uh, if you can have those comments over to us by Thursday, we can make sure that uh, the board all has them before the next meeting as well. And again, you can submit those comments to engage at statecollegepa.us. Uh, Sarah, you should be able to unmute and talk. Um, hi, thank you um, for letting me speak. And also thank you for um, your commitment to a civilian oversight board and for your commitment to hearing public opinion. Uh, my name is Sarah Wiley and I live on East Foster Avenue and my family has lived in the borough for about 20 years. Um, I, I think first I just wanna speak, I'm gonna try to speak about the goals and then I would like to just give some, I'm gonna try to just give some general feedback and hopefully I can fit that into the time. Um, okay, thank you. You might get an extra minute or two if you uh, oh. combining two. <laughs> exciting then <laughs> all right so i first so like i said i just want to first speak about the goals and priorities um i think that the most important goal should be to ensure fair and equitable conduct i think that that's the main reason that activist organizations around the country and including the 320 coalition here in state college have called for civilian oversight boards um and if i felt comfortable that the um police department was um, engaging in fair and equitable conduct i think that would make me feel more comfortable about the role in the police in state college but after that, after that priority, which I think that we should all hold as our pretty much highest priority, I would also hope that the oversight board could promote thorough and fair investigations and improve policies. Um, it's very important to me that the board's monitoring and investigations are completely independent of police influence, whether that is through people who are very close to the police department, people who are members of police unions, people who, um, you know, have close conduct, um, close relationships with 
members of the police or the union. Um, I think it's very, it would be very hard for the board to conduct fair investigations if um, it was under any pressure from the police department or the union, because then they might not be able to hold officers accountable, even in cases of clear misconduct or where they should be held accountable. My third priority would be that the civilian oversight board would be able to influence and improve policy. Um, throughout the country, many people who are victims of police misconduct and brutality don't get justice because investigations often find that the police are acting in accordance with policy. However, this does not always make what happened okay. For example, the killing of Osazi Osagi was found to have occurred in accordance with department policy. It is clear to me, however, and many others, that regardless of policy, what happened to Osazi Osagi was wrong. I think that an effective civilian oversight board would be able to affect policy when it becomes clear that specific policies have led to violent, discriminatory, or unjust outcomes. Um, my fourth and fifth priorities would be to ensure an accessible complaint process and increase transparency, respectively. Transparency and an accessible complaint process would allow significant community involvement, which is very important to me. To me, improving public trust should be the last priority for the board. It should not really be a goal of the oversight board, but rather an inevitable byproduct of an effective board. Um, there can be no public trust of the police until there is fair and equitable treatment, transparency, improved policies, accessible complaint processes, and fair investigations. Those should be our main focuses first. Uh, as far as the scope of the Civilian Oversight Board's influence, I think it's important that our Civilian Oversight Board have enough power, as Melanie and Ayun and um, Maggie were saying, I think it's very important that the Oversight Board have actual power, not only to investigate and monitor police conduct, but also to impact policies and to hold police officers accountable for their misconduct. Um, I also want to reiterate that I believe it should be completely independent of police influence. Those are just kind of my thoughts about the scope of the board's power and about the goals. Um, and then I would like to give just a few suggestions. Um, so it's very important you're, to me that when you're, you're selecting- at, Sorry, Sarah, you're right at 30 seconds, but I'm gonna add another minute on as you move on okay. to the general comment. Okay, thank you, thank yep. you. Um, it's very important to me that when selecting members of the Civilian Oversight Board, these um, candidates are questioned on their view of the ways that race, gender, and mental illness interact with policing. They should have an understanding of how systemic racism and implicit bias impacts policing and incarceration. One suggestion to improve racial sensitivity is for members of the board to undergo anti-racist trainings, although these would have to, it would, we'd have to make sure that those are actually effective. Um, it's also very important to me that the Civilian Oversight Board prioritizes the insight of people who are systemically oppressed by the police, specifically Black and Brown members of our community and those with disabilities and mental illness. Uh, lastly, I know that the 320 Coalition has put pressure on the police department for over a year, and as a result of this pressure, the borough has begun to educate the public on police proceedings. The Civilian Oversight Board should take on this responsibility of educating the public, and they should ensure quarterly public briefings are provided, in addition to briefings on the borough manager's diversity, equity, and inclusion report. Thank you again for letting me speak um, and thank you to your commitment um, to ensuring that we have an effective civilian oversight board. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Sarah. Appreciate it. Okay, Andrew, you should be able to talk. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome, so I'm a resident of State College. I was an undergraduate student here for four years and I'm now pushing into my third, almost fourth year of graduate school. So I like to think that I'm fairly invested in the community overall. Um, I'll try to keep this short. As many commenters have said, it is incredibly important that this oversight board have some sort of teeth. If it is merely just a advisory system as what may have been implied, that's not gonna accomplish anything. It needs to have the power to enact policy changes and to perform investigations. I think it's also important that the members of the oversight board be um, free from conflicts of interest relating to policing, perhaps even with regards to businesses and how it is, um, how they are enforced or how policing is enforced around businesses. For instance, given the pandemic now, we have, I mean, ho hopefully many of the businesses in town have been following the restrictions, but a member of the oversight board should not be somebody who seeks to benefit off of or lack or benefit from a lack of enforcement of COVID policies. Um, but yes, I just want to state that there should be teeth to the system. There needs to be term limits and it should be free from conflicts with regard to policing in town. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Andrew.
I am not seeing any additional hands up at the moment. Is there anyone else that would be like to be recognized to speak? Please again, use the raise hand feature. Uh, there's also some good comments within the chat. So I appreciate everyone uh, submitting comments there. And as uh, shown on the screen, additional comments can be sit, submitted to engage at statecollegepa.us. You, you can submit them through next Thursday, which is October 8th. October 8th next Thursday. If there, again, if there's anyone else that would like to speak uh, on these first two prompts, um, the uh, Please raise your hand now, um, and if not, we'll move over to the next uh, the next section of the meeting. Okay, thank Douglas, you. Doug. I, just wanted to, I just wanted to say one quick thing, and uh, this was mentioned yesterday. A lot of great ideas and a great uh, number of specifics were given uh, to the through this conversation so far. If anyone has any additional resources that would be helpful in our investigation of uh, the COB, please also provide that to us as well. Your opinions and your, your thoughts matter, uh, but also the resources that you may have that we may not. So as we continue to push forward, please also share the resources to help us along this process. Great. Thank you, Jason. Um, before we move to the next round, uh, do any other members of the study committee have uh, comments or, or questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to the second round and I'm going to read the description we had for the second round. Again, this is just general comments, but perhaps the, the description will, uh, will in, encourage some, uh, some additional comments. So um, if I can read this. <laughs> um, so some way may wish to describe experiences with the State College Police Department or express overall perceptions about the department or provide suggestions not previously discussed, or identify other oversight goals that may be considered. So as with the um, first round, we'd be looking for holding this to about four minutes, um, but we, we'd like you to, to really try to focus these comments around the issue of, of uh, any kind of goals or any kind of activities that a community oversight board would have. What are, what are some of the actionable things that our study group could take into consideration as we, as we think about models that we could recommend to uh, the Borough Council. So with that, we're, we're gonna open it up to general comments. Again, trying to limit comments to about four minutes each. And I'll turn it back to Douglas. Hi, everyone. Uh, I did want to uh, bring up a question that's in the Q&A that uh, I don't know if anyone on the board or committee has an answer to yet, or uh, it's an additional comment as well. It says, does the oversight board include overseeing police that operate on Penn State campus? If there's anyone uh, able to answer that question, either answer it now, or it may be something to consider as, as you develop this oversight uh, board. Sure, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll take a, a shot at that. The the, the focus of, of the work of this study committee is the police coverage area. So it's, it's State College Police and any of the townships that the police provide coverage to. Uh, since Penn State has their own police department, uh, that would not be part of it. But one of the comments we heard last night that I think is, is an important comment is that um, in, the, in the center region in Center County, um, there is a lot of collaboration across the departments and a lot, of, um, a lot of consideration of best practices or looking to either the State College Police Department or other departments for best practices that can be shared around the county. And so there is, I think, an opportunity, even if um, what we recommend or what is, what is put in place eventually um, might be focused on the State College Police Department and its coverage area, um, there could be benefits brought more broadly than that. Um, both in terms of just education or um, best practices that could be considered by other departments, including um, Penn State Police Department. Douglas, is there anyone um, raising hands for round two? I do not see any hands raised at the, oh, we do have one hand raised. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, David. Okay, uh, this, is, this is David Stone. Uh, East Foster Avenue in the borough. 
I want to follow up and hopefully clarify some of my general comments yesterday. Uh, Nittany Valley Environmental Coalition has been thinking a lot about a, a, a expanded public health department, particularly because of COVID, but also environmental issues that we're involved in. And, and I also alluded to the importance of, of, of a process which gives you authority, which has to be due process compliant and, and be fact-based and not be arbitrary and capricious. So I, 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 and I, and I, and I, I think there, it would be very beneficial for the Cobb to have an associated public health department that had been expanded with its own resources. Uh, I, I think to make a pun, I suppose, in a way we have to cobble together the authority under the existing rules uh, and, and then perhaps look at expansion later. But, but as the chairman here said, uh, that, that we have to deal with what the world as we find it right now in the next few months as we face this COVID crisis and as we face this uh, crisis in, in, in trust of police who actually have to, it's all we really have to, to, to deal with the COVID crisis on the ground in the next few months or, or maybe longer. So for example, on the health department, one, one thing State College was able to take a leadership role as set an example on, on some of the COVID regulations. And, and we work very hard to get the adjacent townships to, to, to adopt similar uh, restrictions as an interim measure, realizing in the long run, we need, we need more subtle and, 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 and focused measures. The same could happen with the oversight board. Once there is an oversight board which is established, you, you, could, you could then enter into arrangements with Penn State Police and other police forces uh, in much as the way that the State College even now, I believe, contracts not only police services, but some public health services to say Ferguson, for example. So I, I really think you're going to have to, to piece something together uh, and, and be open-minded about thinking outside the box and how to do that. And I, and I want to make one last thing, if I may. There are other issues that the police are essential to in terms of neighborhoods and people that feel threatened in neighborhoods by certain uh, behaviors and things that go on. And also the pressures we face as a tourist destination. And, and, and often it's, it's, it's kind of binge tourism where people come and, and, and sort of uh, let, 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 things, let, things, let things happen. And that is, a, is one of the reasons we, people have been on edge in the past and one of the reasons that people invested so heavily in the police. And I, I don't think there are many people that want to let that go without a, a comprehensive, fair, due process compliant process to monitor it all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, David. To avoid uh, mispronouncing your name, uh, I will spell it. It's R-N-A-N-R-E. You should be able to talk now. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Nanre Napsiga, Uda Nanre Napsiga. I live in Wolfsburg, um, and I am here in many different capacities. I'm a co-leader of B20. I'm also a parent. Um, I have children within the SCSI system. And I would like to make some general comments um, on this section. The first comment I would like to make um, is on the police in schools. And I know that several demands have been made um, by different par by parent associations about the presence of police in our school system, in particular the SCASD system, to take those police out. And I believe that the oversight board, in terms of creating a relationship between the community and the police, I think it's very interesting to see that these demands were completely ignored. And even though there has been high levels of violence, across the country between police and our communities. And of course, Osazi Osage was killed here. We still saw when we came on the first day of school, um, police sitting in front of our schools, greeting our children in September. And as a black parent, I find that very disturbing. I asked my son, how does he feel about the presence of police in schools? And he, he was also very upset about the continuing presence of police in schools. So one of the roles of the oversight board needs to be to examine what happens when communities make specific complaints 
and these complaints are not heard or listened to. So the, the oversight board has a specific role of ensuring the, the place of community demands and those demands being addressed. And if those demands are not met by the police, um, the borough council has the um, prerogative to address those demands. I would also like to reiterate um, what some of my colleagues said yesterday about the composition of the oversight board. And I believe this is the place in which it can be discussed since it's not one of the goals and it's also not listed in the, um, the document that says the comments we can make. I think the, the, the composition of the oversight board is extremely important. It needs to address specifically, it needs to be composed of, uh, it needs to be a representative of communities that are adversely affected by the police historically and also nationwide. So we need to see representation of populations that have been over policed in the community. And we need to make sure that the members of the oversight board um, do, are diverse. So for instance, we have an all white borough council um, and what is the, re what is the represent representation going to be in the community oversight board? And I think that is very important that we specify the composition and the populations that will be represented. I see that among these, this ad hoc board, there is some level of representation and we want to ensure that um, communities continue to be represented in the uh, formal board that is inaugurated. We also want to make sure that um, the presence and the, the voices of those who are for, formerly incarcerated people are also represented and heard, especially those who have had interactions with the police. Um, I see my time is up. We will be making a formal contribution via email as the 320 Coalition to, put, to pull together all our different comments, as well as making specific recommendations and submitting additional documents. Thank you. Great, thank you. And thank you for um, submitting those documents on behalf of the 320 Coalition. Maggie. Hello again. Um, I'm Maggie Sakura. I live in the State College Borough. And yeah, just to follow up with some general comments, um, I wanted to ask or just put it out there. Um, I know that the Borough Council has, after work um, by community members and activism, they now have briefings regarding diversity, equity, and, and um, inclusion. And I was wondering or hoping that the, C, the COB or COB or whatever um, we call it now, it, um, that they would also have public briefings maybe about quarterly so the um, community members could talk about any issues that are still they're having with the police in terms of diversity, um, equity, and inclusion. Um, and I also, you mentioned before that these comments should be thinking about what the um, COB, what the board would um, be responsible for. And so I guess for me, I, I think it would be really important that the board was doing really thorough investigation and monitoring, monitoring of um, general police practices and policies and um, looking at data when in terms of race or income. Um, location and, and making sure that we are that the police are acting fairly um, and equitably. So really, just kind of being monitor monitoring of all that is happening. Um, and again, like we've talked about before in this meeting, having um, the power to actually um, address concerns of of citizens. Um, and finally, I wanted to add that when we do select the members for this board, I, I hope that we can. Um, ask them thorough questions about what their um, what their beliefs are or what their understanding is of policing in America and its history, what their understanding is of policing currently and what issues are that that they see and that they'd like to address. Um, anything to really give us a, an understanding of, of how they see police and its role in the community um, and what their what they're at, what that kind of ideas they would bring to the COB. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Catherine. Hi, can you hear me? We can. My name is Catherine again. I live in the State College borough. I wanted to echo what Nanre said about having people who are formerly incarcerated 
on this board. Um, also, one of the questions was about transparency. I think up to the police being more transparent in our community would be to release the name of the officer who shot Osazi and those involved. Um, as far as things that need more community oversight, I think investigations would need more oversight and also um, thinking of police are sent out. There's been talk of um, if it is a mental health issue, are police really the correct members to be to be sent? Um, and I think that that question could use community oversight as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not seeing any other hands up. Is there anyone else that would be, like to be recognized to speak? Errol. Yes, my name is Errol Henderson. I live in this community. I've been here since 2002. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thank you. I think uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I think it's difficult to talk about police oversight if uh, haven't. Uh, um, release the names of the officers involved in the Osage killing, including the one that fired the fatal shot. But not only that, we don't have <clears throat> uh, people, the, the committee members should be among those that press for important answers. For example, at one meeting, I asked the assistant police chief, why wasn't Osage's roommate interviewed? I mean, he was sleeping there during the police killing. And he said he didn't think they needed to. Now this is after these so-called independent investigations, which haven't been independent at all. So it's important. Some of these things are difficult, complex, esoteric, abstruse. Some of them are just straightforward. How do you not interview his roommate who's in the apartment when he's killed? And then to say to your public that uh, he didn't think he needed to. So some of these things are not mysterious. We've had people with mental health concerns in state college since there's been a state college. They weren't killed. So I don't, I think it's important to address these issues, the myriad issues, but they don't go to the heart of the killing of uh, Osazi. And I'm concerned that boards sometimes don't represent the interest that brought them into existence. They become just another bureau, uh, bureaucracy to um, hand wash. And then what happens is you leave the conditions there so there's no, uh, the, the, the likelihood that another uh, incident is going to occur is very high. For example, now, when you don't release the officer's name, people are left to, to assume or be concerned or to worry that if they even call the police, that officer one is going to show up because they don't know who he is. So it creates undue stress within the community, even among those who are otherwise very, very positively disposed to the police. And if these issues aren't investigated thoroughly, this is what you leave. So it's so important that community oversight is just that. The police serve and protect us. And that's important and have that impetus uh, on the uh, community. And I think one of the first things this community uh, board can do is require the release of the names of not just the ones who uh, killed Osage, but any police who's involved in a, a shoot. It's not to slander them or to condemn them. It's to reflect on the actions they took so that we can ensure that this doesn't happen again. I'll leave it. Thank you, Errol. Joseph. Hi again, everybody. Uh, Joseph Reese, uh, resident of State College. Um, well, I just wanted to well, first echo what uh, Errol said. I thought that was really powerful. Um, and I, I totally agree. Um, I think well, two things I wanted to say. I mean, in terms of specific actions, I'm not familiar enough with um, all the rules and, and procedures and ordinances and things to say what, what would and wouldn't be possible. Um, I, to go back to kind of my earlier comments, I think I don't want the, I don't think the civilian or oversight board should just be reactive. It needs to be proactive. It needs to identify issues that are systemic, historic, um, and that keep happening. Um, 
and right and along these lines that we're seeing right like are police officers are the best actors to be dealing with mental health crises um the the other thing that i think is really important too is um in terms of things that should be done is you know the community oversight board i think uh it needs to um, involve, it needs to actually sort of represent, I mean, other people have made comments along these lines as well, right? It needs to represent the community it's serving um, in, in all of its diversity. Um, um, and it needs to also, uh, you know, people need to trust it as well like people need to be involved they need to feel like their voices are being heard uh, and that it isn't just going to be another bureaucratic um, structure in place another layer of obf obfuscation between you know the community and ensuring that the police are held accountable um yeah thank you thank you joseph kathleen kathleen Yes, can you hear me okay? We can, thank you. Okay, great. Um, I am the executive director of Centerpiece. Um, Centerpiece is working hand in hand with CAMCJ um, on a restorative program, and I won't, I won't waste time talking about that. Uh, the reason I wanted to bring it up is I do believe that there is a role for this board to play with that as we move forward or for an oversight board to play, as well as with the police. And what community conferencing, that is the program, we hope to launch it in spring, uh, next spring. And what that is, is a, it, it's a restorative justice program. So instead of um, things immediately going into citations or putting cases into courts, it's handled through dialogue so that you can keep things off people's records. We have presented this to Chief Gardner, to Tom King. I won't put words in their mouth, but they have been very positive and very receptive of this program. Um, and I just wanted to bring it up. I know that Jason Brown is familiar with this. I've talked with him about it, but it is, it's a wonderfully positive way to handle things. Um, and as I said, the whole goal is to not throw people into jail, to not um, hurt their permanent record. And from an oversight standpoint, um, it would it would give a, a board the right to retroactively look at something that just happened and say this is not a court case. This is something that can, can be handled through community conferencing. Um, Baltimore has been doing this since 1995. Um, they look at basically racial disparities that happen. They've been able to settle so many things. They're even handling murder cases through community conferencing. It's not just for um, broken windows downtown and for neighborhood disputes. So I just wanted to put that on the table because I do think that um, it is coming. It's something that I think will be wonderfully positive for both the police, for the community, for, in, uh, for the, the public at large. So I just, I wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. And Kathleen, if, if I could, um, if, if there's any information that you can provide to us through the through email on the community conferencing or any of the other restorative justice approaches that you're recommending or on the uh, Baltimore model, um, that would be, I think, really helpful for us to um, understand better. Absolutely, I absolutely I will. Um, restorative Response is their website in Baltimore. Got it. Um, actually, the person who initiated that program is going to be the trainer for the facilitators for us. We've already contracted with her. She's going to be coming to State College to train and help implement this program here. And is the, um, I, I know that District Attorney's Office has been um, looking at some diversion programs, especially around mental health. Is, are, are they involved in any way in, in these discussions with you? Um, I would say they are, uh, I, yes, we have um, a member of their office on the committee. Um, so yes, in a sense that they are, but we're, we're just now really starting to get out into the community with it. 
um, out into community groups and to start to uh, actually look for two directors for it, two part-time directors. Sounds great, thank you. Thank you. If anyone else would like to be recognized to speak, I also see that there's plenty of questions coming in via the uh, Q&A and, and chat. Those are being recorded and uh, submitted to the uh, committee. Uh, again, as you can see on your screen, you can also submit comments via email uh, through Thursday, uh, that's October 8th, or at engage at statecollegepa.us. And again, if anyone else would like to be recognized at the time, please raise your hand. Mark and committee, I am not seeing any additional hands up. Okay, thank you, Douglas. Um, I'm gonna turn to uh, any committee members. We're, we're about to wrap up. So if there's any committee members that want to uh, make any statements or, or comments, uh, now would be an opportunity. Janet? I just wanted to say uh, uh, that not all of the questions uh, have been answered, but they, um, uh, these are questions that I think are really important for us to consider. So um, just because they haven't been answered doesn't mean that they're not going to. We're still taking it all in and um, uh, wanting to process. So please um, feel confident that we're going to honor um, the importance of what it is that you uh, recommended that we look at. Thanks, Jerry. Others? Um, I, I uh, Mark, this is not me. I, I wanted to... I wanted to, I saw a couple of uh, questions about whether we can um, recommend directing resources to support race relations or mental health issues, um, whether the COB would have access to people with that expertise. And I want to say to the person who asked the question, I, I think we end up um, having to kind of recommend the kind of composition. So we would definitely uh, appreciate input in uh, you know, who should be on there, and these would be things that we would definitely take into consideration. I think we're empowered to make recommendation on who could be on there, but we can't. Uh, so we want all the input in, you know, making that kind of recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Lainey. And and that's true. Our, you know, one of our um, mandates or missions is to uh, talk about the membership of the board in terms of qualifications and categories and exclusions and and uh, requirements. So I, I think we certainly have um, an opportunity to address uh, some of those issues that were raised. But but as was said, uh, we aren't the ones that would be doing the de determining uh, what the board would be or who would be on it. But I think recommending uh, things consistent with what we heard make a lot of sense. So thank you. Other comments from um, committee members? Mark, can you remind everybody who's attending uh, what the final work of the, of the committee, when that will take place? Yes, I, I will, thank you. Um, as long as no one else has uh, comments or questions, I'll, uh, I'll do a quick wrap of that. Jason? I just wanna say uh, a big thank you and, I, and uh, to everyone who's taken the time out of their day to share their thoughts with uh, our, our committee. Uh, in addition to the folks who did speak up or write their comments and questions in chat, I, I hope and I encourage you all to take the time to, um, to, to ask questions, to provide resources, even if you did not speak up today. This committee's effectiveness is, is related to a lot of factors, but one key factor is your input and your contributions to this conversation. So I'll first, I want to say thank you, first of all, to um, having these tough conversations. And two, I want to say thank you to your current and future contributions so that we can make uh, this COB as good as it can be. Thanks, Jason. Uh, well, actually, one last thing. Oh, uh, the sure. community uh, conferencing group that, that Kathleen just, uh, just mentioned, are there, if, there are any other, uh, if there are any other groups in town or activities that are related to any of the conversations that we're having that could help us make a stronger environment for everyone here, uh, please let us know about those. I'm sure community conferencing is not the only one, and I hope to hear more about the efforts that others might be taking here in the community. Great, thank you. Um, any others, other comments? 
Okay, I'm, I'm not seeing any, so uh, I'll do a, a quick close. So um, our, there are a lot of comments. We've, we've heard a lot. Um, we've received um, a, a lot of questions and suggestions in chat, and we really encourage the use of, of the email opportunity to um, send us information or suggestions. Um, this has been a really helpful process, I think, for all of us. Uh, as I said last night, uh, we spent, uh, I think, about two hours and received wonderful and really helpful comments. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. And so, at least um, from this point forward, uh, the committee will be working both through email and, and eventually through our next meeting to, to review all of the comments received and, and you know, dig a little deeper and try to look at these and, and uh, bring them together to help um, guide our discussions. Uh, we are scheduled to have uh, three more of our committee meetings, um, the next one on October 9th. And at that uh, meeting, we will try to uh, review the, the comments and start to think about models that fit the um, purposes or goals that we think are, are important and think about the role of a, a board. Um, I think we, we certainly have to reach out and, and, and talk to the um, to law enforcement, to the police department, or the association, um, because as as many of you mentioned, there's there's um, we we need to look at at what kind of role a committee could play, and and also be aware of any kind of uh, restraints or or restrictions, because we want to make sure that we're recommending something that is purposeful and and can do something, and so we're going to need to know. Uh, what are the what are the boundaries, or or how do we address those, and um, and what are the things we can do right now, or recommend right now, and what are the things that we can try to promote as change in the future? So I think those are all things that we will be discussing. As I said, we'll have three more of these committee meetings, but then we will have uh, at least one more um, public meeting similar to these, and we hope to do that the week of October 26th. And during that meeting, we'll try to bring to the public uh, where we are at that process, at, at that point. And, and we hope at that point we have a model or models in mind, and we want to at least get some feedback on that before we would present anything to uh, Borough Council. So the week of October 26th is what we envision, and we will be uh, publicizing it again like this. and. Um, and we will make available to the public any of the information we have uh, that may be useful for, uh, for comment. Um, the committee also has to report to Borough Council. We have a preliminary report that's due on October 12th, and then we have a final report that's due on November 7th, I mean, November 9th. And so you can see we have a pretty short timeline in terms of uh, working through a lot of these issues. Um, but that is our, our plan moving forward. Um, again, we would encourage um, any additional comments or suggestions or information that can help inform our work. And, um, and I just want to be uh, sort of align myself with everyone else in the committee to thank everyone that took the time to, uh, to attend, sometimes attend both of these public meetings to provide such thoughtful comments and, um, and to work with us as we try to come up with a a plan moving forward that we can um, that we can recommend to borough council. Um, with that, I'm, unless there's any other comments, um, I think we'll. Adjust. I do want to. I do want to make one more comment. Yeah, actually, so I, so I keep. Uh, actually, I'm not sorry. I think this is a conversation. Um, there's been a bunch of folks who asked this question, and I think it's important to address directly. Uh, will there be retroactive action from this cop um, to investigate? Uh, instances like Osaze's uh, murder? Uh, the answer is that right now, we don't know the answer to that question. And we are going, and what we're tasked to do is, is figure out how we can shape this, if that is indeed the need of the community, which it seems to be an overwhelming uh, desire for that to exist, then how do we shape the future of our community to allow that to happen? Will we be able to do it retroactively? I don't know, but our goal is to set it up so that we can feel safe in this community. We can go to, uh, we can bring up instances of conflict and concern and address them accordingly. So I wanted to, multiple people asked that question. I thought it was important to address that directly. 
And there might have been other questions that were asked in chat. Um, do you, does anyone on the committee have any insight to how we can, if, if I, I don't want anyone to feel as if their question were missed or we were not answering their concern or addressing it. How are we going to go about um, addressing anything that might have been submitted to us? And you might have already stated it, but restating it might be helpful. Right. So, so our, our plan moving forward is to review all chat and uh, all email uh, and information provided to the committee. Uh, we'll do that among ourselves, but then we'll do it at our next, um, we'll, we'll visit that at our next um, scheduled meeting, which is in, in October, later in, in the next week. Um, any other comments or, or questions? Mark, is regarding our next meeting, that's on the 9th, is it, does it start at 11.30? It, it does. It starts at, um, yes, 11.30 on the 9th, 11.30 to 1.30. Okay, thanks. And between now and then, all members will receive uh, a summary or all the information related to the chat, any other questions um, received, and, um, and the uh, recordings of these two public meetings will be available as well. And uh, if we have any other documents that we receive um, by anyone who, um, who provided public comments, we'll make sure that's available so that you can review it before we have our next meeting. Barbara? You know, uh, as a, a point of feedback and hearing, I want our community to know it, not just that we appreciate them being a part of this dialogue today, but that we hear them. We have some repeated concerns, uh, which lets us know that many people are concerned about the same thing. But I just want folks to know we hear you and we are trying to operate in a way that your concerns are best taken care of. But we hear you and we thank you for letting us hear your voices. Thank you, Barbara. Anyone else? All right, great. With that, uh, I'll adjourn the meeting. Uh, thank you all for your participation.